Welcome to The Wall. Today, we'll be discussing the case of a woman who decides to leave the father of her two daughters when he is going through an illness to then move in with other single mothers. Additionally, we'll explore how dating women over 30 nowadays is awful. Before we begin, we want to thank you for being here. Your support means a lot to us. If you enjoy what you see, we invite you to subscribe to the channel and leave a like. We'd also love to hear about your experiences in the comments. Your engagement helps us grow and reach more people. Thank you for being part of our project. Let's get started. If you are a single woman looking for a man, preferably an older man, maybe in his 50s to 60s, maybe late 40s, buy yourself a Cadillac. I, ever since I've had this Cadillac, I get eyed up and down and asked so many questions about this car. They're always like, hmm, they want the car. So get the caddy and then maybe you can get yourself the man if you want an old man. If you don't want an old man, don't get a Cadillac because they swarm you. I'm a single lady living in Toronto and these are some of the dating rules that keep me from going crazy because these streets, these streets are wild. Number one, I don't attribute meaning to people I don't know that well. That nice text, that great first date, that doesn't mean that they're the one. It just means it was a nice text or a good first date. Probably most importantly, and I should have led with this, I don't get my validation or confidence from men. But whether or not someone likes me really doesn't matter all that much. And I remind myself that you're not supposed to be for everybody. Not every person you go on a date with is meant to be your person. So it's okay if it feels like you've been on a string of 10 really bad dates with guys you don't connect with. Have you noticed that every day there are more and more women talking about how to get men, how to make them approach you? Listen to this woman. Buy yourself a Cadillac and older men will come to you. When nowadays there are women who can't even support themselves, let alone think about a Jeep like that. Don't you notice that when women talk about dating, they always talk in plural, always with numbers from 5 to 10 dates? This just makes it clear to me that when a woman goes out with a man, there are nine others waiting their turn. That's why the saying goes, she was never yours, it was just your turn, isn't it? With dating apps, women plan to see two to four men in a week. Of course, there's always a simp willing to pay for a free meal. How do these women with so many dates not manage to meet a man? Or as she says, my person, if she has a line of men waiting their turn. Of course, you won't be interested in any of them because tomorrow there will be another man ready to take you out to eat. Then they get upset when the man doesn't accept them with a high body count. What do you think if a 30-year-old man says he has interest in me? I am 20 years old, by the way. 30 years old for a man, it's, it's pretty young. Mentally, he's your age. It's really up to how mature you are and your self-esteem. If you have high self-esteem and you don't think that people can manipulate you or control you and you know your worth, then I don't see anything wrong with dating a 30 year old I don't think you should date anyone under 30 so in my opinion you either wait until you're you know 25 or whatever age your self-esteem has improved and then start dating guys who are over 30. I, I would never suggest any girl any age to date a guy under 30 because they just they have to mature guys under 30 are not looking for anything serious and if they spend their 20s with you then eventually they're going to want to make up for it so i just i wouldn't suggest it sincerely a gold digger woman these women who claim to be of high value have reality distorted in their heads a woman in her 20s or a man between 25 and 30 would be the best option as they are young individuals with whom you can build your future. That's an appropriate age. But she advises to seek men over 35, which isn't wrong either. But what she wants to sell is to find a man already built, not one in the process of building. Why? Because they don't want to be the woman in the process. They want to be the woman who finds the man already successful, where they only contribute their presence. In other words, they want to wait at the finish line. But many women who choose this path fail because winners have a lot of demand. And not every woman has what it takes to access these men. To a young woman, I would say to bet on a man's potential. But that's also why I tell men to focus on themselves. It's always the best investment, as women nowadays only want the winner. They don't want to contribute anything to a man's life. They only want to receive. This is what these self-interested women sell, that they deserve to receive just for being women. Chris, hi. Wow, you have the exact amount of hair that you have in your profile photo. You have no idea how refreshing that is. <laughs> um, sorry, yeah, before we order drinks, can I just lay a few things out to the table so we're both not wasting our precious times when we could be answering unread emails? <laughs> so, um, I'm looking for a husband and someone to have kids with. Ooh, 
today because I know. <laughs> um, I'm not saying right now, you don't have to impregnate me on top of these menus. That's just what I'm looking for right now. So if commitment is like the boogeyman to you, I totally get it, but you know, boo. Also, I have never come to completion solely by having an eggplant inside of my flower garden. It's important that you know that. In my multiple years of being sexually active, it's never happened, not once. So I'd appreciate you not making your entire personality about being the person who changes that. <laughs> it's gonna affect your manhood. I'm probably just not the girl for you. And I'm definitely not gonna spend the next 10 years pretending like I am, if you know what I mean. Um, I'm a feminist, shocker. <laughs> and I'm not necessarily saying you have to be. Labels can be weird. I just would prefer you not think that any man who willingly went to go see Barbie was gay by default. Also, that being said, my best friend's on standby and she will come save me immediately should you say anything even remotely resembling an Andrew Tate quote. That one's just for my safety. Now, last but not least, I'm looking for someone who wants me as a partner, not a cheerleader. The blonde hair can sometimes throw people off. So if you want a little more rah, rah, sis, boom, ba, Chris, I love that for you. You're a very attractive man. That's why you're here. I'm sure you can find a variety of options available to you at the local mall. Now, that being said, Chris, do you feel like we're on the same page? Can we order a drink and try not to talk about our ex for the next hour or are we reading different chapters? Fantastic. Let me go pay for parking. I'll be right back. This is horrible nowadays. Going on dates with a 30-year-old woman is like applying for a low-paying job. They tell you all the requirements they want, and you realize that not even with 40 years of work experience would you fill the position. Once a woman hits 30, she starts to panic about her age, and the wall doesn't forgive. She might be joking, but the reality is that dates are like this. She'll start bombarding you with questions one after another, waiting to see how you respond while she evaluates you. Why do men think they want to deal with this? When you finally answer everything, and let's say you get good grades, you realize it's not worth the effort because the girl comes with several traumas left by Chad, a man who brings nothing to the table except his seat. Then you find out she went to therapy because of this man, and apparently, therapy didn't help her at all. So as a man, you understand that this woman is crazy, and it's better to avoid chaos in your life. <laughs> what do wedding vows really mean anymore? I feel like it is time to share a part of my life. So the truth is, um, addiction has been something that we have had to battle in our marriage. It's been something that is extremely heavy. It comes with a lot of things. The truth is, my husband was in treatment for 40 days at the end of last year. It was really hard, as you can imagine. I haven't realized how much of survival mode I've been in. I just so badly wanted to fix and do and like, put everything into this, like my whole soul into this process. Anyone that deals with addiction of any kind knows that when you're dealing with someone that you love that is facing that, I mean, it just, it takes everything out of you. Like that is just the honest truth. There's no way around it. Your life revolves around it. It consumes every part of who you are, what you do, what you feel. And like, you have to learn so much in this process. <laughs> when you've experienced so the depths of everything with someone you can imagine what that brings up for both of us in facing that and it's scary it's hard it's terrifying it's vulnerable it's raw it's i mean it's everything you can think of and you have two people that love each other that are facing something very very heavy and very very difficult also in the midst of raising two little girls I think for me, I realized that when I look back on the last few years, I really need time to heal. I really need time to be a mom. Those things are so necessary to be able to work on things again. He is doing all the work that he can. Our fight is just going to look a little different right now. This has been a really hard burden to carry. I don't want to carry it anymore. There's no shame or guilt. I just want to be seen for me. Marriage vows were only for the man, in sickness and in health. But the woman only remembers that she should support you in the good times because in the bad times, the first one to jump ship is the woman. That's why I always say, on the wedding day, only the man marries for love. The woman marries for a lifestyle. 
The moment that lifestyle starts to fade, she'll jump ship, tear you apart with a divorce to deliver the final blow, even if you're already sinking. Just hearing her say this has been an incredibly heavy burden, and I don't want to carry it anymore. It's clear that this man no longer benefits you. Now, what's needed is for you to step forward and help him. She's tired and wants to leave that behind, to go out with whatever she can salvage from that situation, abandoning her husband. But what would have happened if it were the man giving a speech like this? He wants attention, of course. He wants to go out and try with other women. He's a more or less young man who thinks he can go out with more women. It's because of things like this that a man wonders, why bother getting married if tomorrow, when he goes through a tough time, he'll be alone anyway, because she chose to leave her husband, the father of her daughters, for this. Check out the second part for more. I take you to be my husband, to have and to hold, from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do us part. This does remind me a little bit about the story I covered a few months ago about the wife who left her dying husband when he was diagnosed with cancer. Um, my only thing is, why can't we stay with our spouses when they're going through something so troublesome? Why can't we just stay committed to our vows? But let's go on. It's time for your next adventure. I'm on my way. I'm on. I have no idea what I'm going to do tomorrow. I'm on. How exciting. Oh, By the way, anybody tells you... Words and ideas can change the world. I love you! Kay? You're safe, sweetie! Okay! Kay? I love you! My life is complicated enough. The last thing I need is more drama. Hey, Miley. Hello, drama. We're single moms. We act like we're strong, independent women until life requires tasks and manage. <laughs> Where's your father? We're single moms. We act like we're happy for each other when we get in a relationship, but secretly we want to go. We're single moms. People ask us how we lose weight, and I say divorce and grief. Good psycho. We're single moms. We take turns scheduling mental breakdowns on the calendar. Yours was last week. It's my turn. Let it go. We're single moms. We complain that there's no good guys out there, but then once a good one comes along, we self-sabotage. We're single moms. We don't need dating up. You can't make this shit up. Here's the woman who said she wanted to be a mom, abandoning her daughters most likely at one of their grandparents' houses, going to live with her group of single mom friends, who were anything but mothers. She leaves her marriage simply to relive her single life. Where are her daughters? Who knows, probably dealing with the aftermath of their parents' divorce. Brothers, this is the modern woman, the one who won't support you in tough times, the one who's only told she deserves everything but shouldn't give anything in return. I can only imagine that destroyed man, coming home hoping for love and understanding from his family in those difficult moments, only to receive the final knife in the back to completely ruin him. So how can you tell me that married men are happier, when the facts tell me I'll only be loved as long as I'm useful? This woman is horrible. She just wanted to wander, travel, and enjoy with the chads, to be like a woman in her 20s again when she has two daughters depending on her. I hope that man manages to recover because that woman will get the karma she deserves at some point, in sickness and in health. Yeah, right? That's why I say, the man is the only one who gets married for love. We've reached the end of the video. 
But before we go, the questions are for you. What do you think about the story of this woman who abandoned her husband? Do you believe that women in their 20s shouldn't date men in their 30s? If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Your support means the world to us and motivates us to create more content. Stay tuned for the next exciting video from The Wall.